Well, this conference will now be recorded. There we go. So we'll go ahead and call the meeting in order for the Board of Commissioners for the Lake Stevens Sewer District for November 12th, 2020. The time is approximately 0904 in the morning or AM as most people might want to know it as. Um, myself, Commissioner Koshi and Commissioner Stevenson are present along with the general manager. And I'm just trying to fix some things on my, I don't know why I'm having such a problem computer wise this morning, it seems like, but I can't, I can't seem to the camera in, but uh, so uh, the only agenda items, because this is more of a workshop type meeting are on the agenda are going to be the new commissioner. Um, it's listed as new commissioner meeting, but we have a new commissioner, uh, Jennifer Stevenson, that is joining us for one of her first official meetings. And then we're also going to do some discussion on the interim general manager position. Um, we do have executive session and conclusion on this, but I don't know if there'll be any need for those. But with that being said, we can go ahead and welcome Commissioner Stevenson to our first meeting. Yay! <laughs> Dan, I um, thought we could go over the agenda so Jennifer kind of knows what to expect tomorrow uh, to make it, you know, comfortable for her and know where take ups and if there was any questions on any of the business items, we could talk about it today as well. Jennifer, you did get your agenda packet, correct? I did, yes. Okay, correct. Perfect. Um, any questions on that? So, I mean, I, what we can do is we can kind of run through just a real basic under um, outline, more or less, of how we kind of operate that. Um, I'm trying to multitask on different screens, and of course, everybody wants to be slower than molasses in the winter, but uh, we'll slowly get there. But in the interim, as things are starting to try to pull up, any questions, uh, Commissioner Stevenson? Nope, just trying to figure out how it all works. Okay, um, we can tackle this a couple different ways. Uh, um, so as you take a look at the agenda packet, obviously, um, generally as we open the meeting, um, there would be a call to order as as we had done this morning. Generally, there's a little caveat now that we are doing virtual meetings that is read prior to that. Um, just letting our citizens understand that this isn't the normal way we do business, but due to a government, um, the governor's proclamation back in March of this year, um, we are doing things by the go-to platform. Um, once we get down, we do Pledge of Allegiance uh, agenda approval. This is an opportunity for any of the commissioners or the staff to kind of add or subtract anything that may not be taking place. Um, just because sometimes we'll have uh, developer extension agreements that might be pulled because the developer wasn't quite ready, but it was put into our agenda um, for us to take a look at. I'll let Commissioner Koshi kind of talk on the consent items. Yeah, consent items are items that we take just in mass. So, you know, opportunity to review those ahead of time, then we'd approve them as one big chunk so that, uh, you know, they don't warrant going down into detail. They're typically routine items, uh, moving monies um, to be able to cover certain uh, financial obligations. Um, uh, Mickey oftentimes, uh, in fact, always uh, sends out a little uh, uh, update that says, hey, on the consent items, here's a little more detail on the financial related ones that uh, uh, we'll be approving. So typically those are, uh, you know, consent items, um, someone makes a motion to approve uh, and we move forward with little discussion. Okay. And those are item number four on the agenda that I'm looking at, the consent items? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, as Commissioner Koshi said, generally you will get a phone call or text message, an email or something, maybe a few days in advance when staff, they'll probably say um, agenda items are, are ready for your review. You can stop by the office and paw through the hundreds of pages of uh, payments and, and things that we've done. So you kind of understand what we're paying. The day of generally 
you get an updated board meeting that morning that may have amounts of dollars. Right now you see them that they're empty, but they may, uh, staff may send you once they get everything ready um, to take a look at. But but the agenda, or as far as the consent items, uh, they're always available in the office. And, and we eventually go in and sign off on those. So uh, there's just lots of pages and staff will be more than happy to walk you through a lot of that. So then we move down to the public forum aspect of it. This is an opportunity for anybody in the public to speak um, on items that might be in our agenda or something they want to talk about outside of the agenda, concern, comments they have. Um, now that we're doing more of a Zoom go-to meeting type platform, we ask a lot of times that folks will send questions in and Tara generally will, will refer to her if she's received anything during that meeting time for us to open it up so anything to add further on that uh commissioner koshi i missed anything nope you're doing great okay um old business um generally what that is is anything that might be in in play somewhere so as you see if you're looking at tomorrow's meeting agenda we have a couple um <laughs> The parking lot expansion, the change orders, uh, pay estimates, anything like that. So until everything has been concluded and really kind of adjudicated through us, uh, when, uh, you may see it come back. Some things are pretty timely because there's projects in process, but sometimes things can, can sit on our old business um, agenda for quite a while but uh yeah everything generally is pretty it's just it's bringing things back up then we move to new business uh, this is where anything that is possibly coming before us for a vote today um, or there may be just some discussion that you'll see in future reference um, like we have down there if you look at e and f in the new business those are going to be board meetings that we're going to have to change because the offices may be closed due to these holidays. So sometimes we try to find out a date. Generally, it's always been the Tuesday prior to the Thursday of that meeting where we kind of move um, some meetings. But it's always open for discussion um, by the board members. And then last but not least, we get down, well, we get down to the manager's reports. That's where the opportunity for our general manager, assistant general manager, treatment plan supervisor to Give us an update on anything that may be occurring within the district or has been done or any 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 um, <laughs> things that are of general interest to to the board members, to the public, uh, to staff, so they get they get to report. Uh, we move down to city report. We generally have somebody from the city, whether it's the mayor attending the the board meeting or the uh, city administrator, uh, they'll report on anything that might be occurring in the city, some of the upcoming things that they're on um, line that they want to, you know, let us know that they're completing or they're working on. Because it, it will have interest to us like what we do has interest to them. Then we move to commissioner's reports. This is an opportunity for each of the commissioners to, um, you know, kind of speak on anything that may come before them or anything that they want to talk about that they've they've attended training or, or they're seeing, you know, some of the work that's being done and thanking the staff. Executive sessions always put on there, there might be an issue of negotiations or such that we're generally told at the beginning of the meeting, there might be in an executive session and, you know, due to negotiations and that's where it would just be uh, the commissioners legal and the administration in, the meeting itself, but we'll invite anybody that might be pertinent to the discussion at hand. And then last but not least, I should say now, uh, the conclusion, we're done for the day and, and we move from there. <laughs> that was pretty self-explanatory. So anything I may have missed uh, that anybody else want to pop in on? I just say that on, on old business and new business, uh, <laughs> typically there's um, one of the staff uh, team members are going to talk talk through that individual item right mm -hmm. so up and say hey um you know resolution 996 hey it's it's 
it's an enhancement to our existing policy. Our current policy reads X. This is Y. This is kind of the logic behind it. So they'll tee it up so it's uh, it's framed. Now there will be the details in the agenda packet that we have the opportunity to read through ahead of time to get familiar. But you kind of get the voiceover and the summary, and then we take action if if that's being you know requested of us. So, you, know, you get guided through it. Um, there's no um, there's no red face test, uh, you know, in any of this stuff. So it's, um, you know, it's it's pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. So if we have no other questions, and I know this probably seems a little overwhelming at times, there, Commissioner Stevenson, just because there's a lot to take in, and it'll it'll come pretty naturally once once we get. Um, so, if, if, if at any time you feel you don't understand something, trust me, just speak up. You are part of the board. You can you can say, you know, let's have some revisiting on that. We're we're always open to uh, having these conversations. Uh, one thing that um, I think is Commissioner Koshi um, speaks of at times. This is one of your most transparent type of boards you'll ever get because as we know as electeds it only takes two of us to be a quorum so we can never meet outside of this and so a lot of discussions have to take place at our meetings which is beneficial to the public at hand because they get to see the the discussion that goes on um, i would always employ you to contact staff if you do have questions you know check with the general manager and say hey i have some questions on this or if you've got stuff coming from finance, they're they're always available to to answer those questions because um, we rely on them. That's why we hire such a, a great staff is to to give us guidance and and uh, keep us out of legal hot water. So yeah. And just to kind of the cadence that I like to use when the um, you know, the agenda packet comes out, I like to scan through it, familiarize myself. I don't read every word, but you know get the headlines, get the bearings. I typically wait for the meetings to conclude and then go to the district office either Thursday afternoon, a lot of times Friday, to sign what needs to be signed. That also, you know, there's gives the staff some time if there's other things, if there's other meeting minutes that need to be signed off on or um, your timesheet in terms of what meetings you participated in, you get prompt for that, but there's a signature requirement. They, Kind of go up and do the signing make sure there isn't anything else to be signed for a commissioner and then you know and then uh uh you know away we go so that's the typical kind of cadence same kind of thing for the utility meetings with the city um typically we have some conversation um you know ahead of time on that if it's a contractual issue it may or may not be in executive sessions but there will be plenty of prep if there's a particular item within the utility district that we need to come together as a team on and we work through that as well. And and again, I just echoed Dan's comments. Ask any question you want. There's not, you know, even public session like we are in now. There's, well, it's not a, not a problem to work through it. Get clarity. Get the background. Get the context. There's there's absolutely, yeah. Don't don't hesitate at all for any of that. That's completely appropriate and understood. And and every one of us. Um, has uh has has asked a few of those questions because okay. just you're coming up to speed on it learning the specifics and it's uh completely appropriate yeah that's so, super helpful thank you <laughs> kevin on that note i do have um your timesheet dan i have your timesheet and then i do have payroll here for you to sign it's all on my desk awesome okay. yeah i'll get in there okay. thank you yep um, Jennifer, do you have any specific questions on any of this stuff that's on the agenda for tomorrow? We, like, like Kevin said, we'll, Jonathan and I will both be explaining each one of those agenda items, and it's they're all pretty simple, um, all pretty standard items. There's nothing that's really um, in depth or anything like that. And like Kevin and Dan have said, if there's anything that's really a significant change or um, a big dollar item or something that's going to impact the district or repairs significantly, we'll have workshops or we'll have ongoing conversations. 
um, with the the staff that we have now, nobody would just come into a meeting and blindside you with million dollar expenses or anything like that. Okay. We'll okay. work it through. Yeah. But if there's anything on here, I'm I more than welcome to go through it with you. To, uh, you know, I can call you later or you can ask. Um, you know, now, but everything else on here is pretty simple. Something that might sound silly, but just like making motions and approving them and what's like mm -hmm. the, you know, the legal terminology or what needs to be said in order for that. Yeah, stuff perfect. To, awesome. Okay. Dan typically will guide us through it, being the president or whatever. We'll talk about an item and then Dan will say something like, hey, I'll entertain a, I'll entertain a motion to take action on this. And I'd say, well, I, I make them, for example, if we resolution on B, new business B, resolution uh, uh, 986, uh, negative sick leave. So you hear some discussion on that. Dan say, hey, I would entertain a motion to um, to take action on resolution on B resolution 986, and I'd say I make a motion that we move forward and approve resolution 986. Provide the what, if there's a signature required. Provide um, district staff uh, to be able to sign it. You'd say, yep, I agree. Second, great. Dan would call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Motion moves. Okay. Wait, wait, okay. Go. Yeah. So it'll be a it'll be a guided okay. guided process. And with Dan as president, Jennifer, you or Kevin will be making the motions. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep. And if you'd like, you know, on this next in this next meeting, I'll tell you, I'll just make the motions if you'd like. Get the. That would be lovely. <laughs> okay. And then you can you can second if you're so inclined, and then that'll kind of get you in the flow and get the meeting to you know not you know not have to be on the balls of your feet. So I would go. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. No, and I look over the agenda. The only thing I have is I hope that interlocal agreement or new business item C, I hope that is an interlocal agreement with that butcher that is out in Clay Elm that does right? that pepperoni stuff because that is one awesome butcher out there in Clay Elm. So I'll tell you what, when they come pick up the generator, uh, we'll have them bring a whole bunch of it. And Dan and I know which one you're talking about. We oh. stop there. Good. Oh, it's awesome. I'll make it a requirement that they bring a bunch of it out. That would be very much appreciated. Yep. All right, I'll 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 uh, make that deal. Good. Sounds good. Is there anything yeah, else, Jennifer? I'm excited. Yeah, no, I'm I'm good. Yeah, you'll do fine. Yeah, you'll do fine. fine. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. yeah, welcome aboard. It's just like you know, Robert's rules of order. We just generally follow that. We might deviate a little bit, but generally it's all within okay. the Robert's rules of order as far as how we'll how we'll call. So with that being said, we'll move into, so we do have a discussion item, which is B. Um, and this discussion item on our agenda is for the interim general manager position. And I'll just lay a little foundation. So um, I know that Commissioner Kochi probably knows about it and, and he'll, he'll be more than happy to add something in there. But so back in, you know, we, we received notification from, from our general manager, Tanya, that she was going to retire this year. Uh, as an organization, we always look for the best ratepayer value. And a lot of times that'll take a look at is who do we have internally versus do we want to spend external dollars for a headhunter, a headhunter um, to, to find us the best candidate. Um, the district has done that in the past um, with not the best success. Um, we pay a lot of money and sometimes we don't necessarily get somebody who wants to stay as long as we envision. And so um, I think when you look at ratepayer value, uh, the ratepayer is not getting the best value for their dollar. So we kind of looked internally and when the announcement came out, I uh, made a motion looking at it um, internally that I saw Commissioner Mariah Lowe. I thought, wow, I wonder if she'd be interested um, in something of that. I know that I uh, reached out to our general manager, Tanya at the time, asked her, said, hey, just ponder this question, see if uh, Commissioner Lowe would have some interest. And, you know, waited to hear. It was just something that I thought, you know, um, it'd be a nice succession plan. There's somebody we have who is a commissioner who fully understands what's going on in the organization, has spent some time as the president and really immersed herself in the process. Um, and so we had a lot of discussion on that. And so the board kind of took a look at it. Um, 
Now, Commissioner Lowe, who did have an interest, recused herself from any of that. So it was really between, between myself and Commissioner Koshi. Um, we started working through the process, thinking this would be a great thing, brought in and spoke with the utility committee. So we do have a monthly UK utility committee meeting. Well, I say monthly, we, we have the option as an organization and they to either do it quarterly as required under our unification agreement, or we can do it monthly if we feel, or even more if we, we think that that's the need. Um, at that time, they took the information in. Um, there was some apprehension on the city's part. That was a, uh, apparent. Um, we did receive a letter from the utility committee, um, which was dated in October 12, 2020. And I know staff can definitely um, get you a copy of that letter. Um, that was kind of that was that was really I think started some of the beginning of of well. Let me back up a little bit. We, we got a letter back in October 2nd from the utility com, uh, committee. So it's the three representatives that come to our meeting from the city side. Um, they obviously had some disagreement. They pointed out in um, their letter that they felt that this should come before the utility committee and that they should be able to weigh in on it. Um, at that time, the commissioners didn't take any action. We did have a follow-up letter that came in on the 12th of October um, from the mayor. And at that time, the mayor was laying out a position on some of the board actions. And in paragraph two of his letter to the, the board of commissioners at the time, um, he put that he disagreed with our, our decision on how we should be able to go about selecting an interim general manager, cited sections of the unification agreement, specifically in section 7.3, 7.5, sections 4.18, and, and spoke of all of that. Um, the Board of Commissioners had a meeting that was going to be scheduled on the 13th of, of October. We, we put that, if I'm correct, that meeting was put off. Um, there was no re reason to do that. Well, we did respond back um, to the city of uh, Lake Stevens. We dated a letter on October 19th. It okay, went to the Honorable Brett uh, Gailey, who is the mayor of the city of Lake Stevens. And we laid out in our um, letter exactly that, yes, we, we did receive, you know, their letter um, that was their official protest. And we did highlight some of the things accordingly in the unification agreement that they, they pointed out, which really were inconsistent in the reading of what the unification agreement was. Um, I think that there might have been some clarification issues that they may have not understood and how that unification agreement was laid out. Um, so, you know, under paragraph four, if you when you get a copy of the letter and i'm sure staff will provide that to you um you know this the, the, the sewer district commissioners have the authority to appoint the next general manager for us we were waiting to make sure we were a fully constituted board of commissioners meaning there were three commissioners and that's why everything was placed on hold until we could appoint a third commissioner which we're very glad that you you came on board um we take seriously what the city has said i mean we we you know we'll look at their recommendations but again they can make recommendations um we're not bound by those recommendations as a board we are duly elected by the by the uh, public the ratepayers in in our district and so um we are free to be able to make a decision that affects the district. Now, we are conscious, conscientious of the fact that um, the unification agreement is going to happen by 2033, and that there may be contracts in the future as we get closer that we definitely wanna make sure that we have some input. Uh, we are 12 years away from when this unification agreement is gonna come into play, and so, uh, we don't feel that any any decisions that the Board of Commissioners take at this time are going to have any detrimental effect 
on the way this organization is run or anything that's going to be incurred by the city. So that's kind of laying the foundation. I'll let Commissioner Koshi speak on anything that he might want to say in there if I didn't cover it, but I did kind of want to put that as part of the discussion so you have an understanding. And I'm sure staff has, has spoken with you on some of those things. Yeah, the only thing I'd add, I think that's a great kind of blow by blow summary on this thing. I guess I'd just take a step back and say that, you know, from a, in a general sense, you know, the city would like to merge the district sooner than later. And in a general sense, absent the uh, uh, early merger date, um, they interpret the contract differently than the district does from the standpoint of how much. I won't say day to day, but how much management oversight they provide on the oversight of, in conjunction with the commissioners. So that's kind of the the undertone of a lot of the, of a lot of the things and the letters that have been passed back and forth. And as, um, selecting a new general manager is just kind of the latest or the most recent thing that you know comes out of that that broader undercurrent. Um, and I think. Dan summarized it well. Um, we are within our authority to be able to uh, identify who the next general manager is. Um, we did take it to the utility committee to uh, share with them, you know, the, what we were considering and to gain their insight and to hear any recommendations that they would like to make. They made those in writing. We provided some clarifications. Um, my view is their philosophy on hiring a you know a general manager leader of leaders you have people that report to that position that have direct reports and their kind of hiring or um, hiring process and how they would analyze uh, an ideal candidate around that um, they did have a different philosophy certainly um, than than i think as a district we've taken we, we probably have taken that same philosophy at some times but currently, that's not really the philosophy. It's certainly not my personal philosophy on hiring that level of, of leader. Um, it's more um, it's more about the person. It's more about demonstrating progression in the position they've had. It's more about it's not about having a spreadsheet and scoring things with numbers and footing it at the bottom and whoever has the largest score. You know, maybe for an engineer for more of an entry level position, I would I would leverage those kind of or highly technical. I would leverage those kind of um approaches i didn't think it fit um but again we we certainly gave um, um considerable consideration to what their recommendations and how they suggested we go about it um so that's kind of the i guess kind of the undercurrent and kind of you know the latest thing and probably the the crux of the difference in uh approaches um um, and I guess the last thing I'd say about it is if there is a commitment we're making that does extend into that um, 20, 32, 33 timeframe, probably you know, a couple years prior, um, that's certainly appropriate to have a, a very involved and um, um, view from the city because they're going to inherit it in a short period of time. But when we're out over a decade, um, you know, I think it's a uh, um, would welcome their insight, but um, um, there isn't veto um, responsibility, authority, or acceptance um, from, from this far out. So that's kind of where we're at. So I think it really comes down to the net net is, is Mariah Lowe an appropriate candidate for that position? And are we comfortable with that? And um, we're moving forward in an interim position for six months, make sure it's you know, is what we've talked about, making sure it's good for her, making sure it's good for the district and, you know, that kind of thing. So it really comes down to is she the, the right person at this time for the district? Um, and uh, and then I don't know, Dan, if you want to share, I don't know how much has been shared in terms of, you know, kind of what's been done, her interviews with um, some other um, uh, neighboring district general managers and so forth. But that's really the crux of it. Is she the right person at this time or should we, you know, do something different? No, and I, and I think you, you, you hit the nail right on the head. I have not shared any of the, the information on that, um, but um, I think it's appropriate this time as we do discuss. I know that what we have done, um, Commissioner Stevenson, is um, we, we asked the neighboring districts um, within, you know, 
the Waz Wad umbrella. So the Washington Association of Water and Sewer Districts. We 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 pit um, organizations that are of similar size or larger and ask general managers from each one of those districts to evaluate um, uh, Ms. Lowe on, on her ability um, if, if the Board of Commissioners were, were to appoint her. And that, you know, they, they did do that for us. Um, they, they did this on November 6th. They had a virtual meeting where, where she was um, interviewed by by the, the general managers from the Olympic View Water and Sewer District, uh, the general manager from Douglas County Sewer District Number One, and also from a um, commissioner who has also been a general manager, but this commissioner works for Muckleteal Muc Water and Wastewater District. So we had a cross selection of individuals that, that came into it and, and interviewed um, Ms. Lowe, and I'm sure that the district will definitely make sure that you have not received a copy of the uh, the latter, but the the last line of the paragraph after they went through, they chat, you know, really they went over her management style, her communication, handling of personnel issues, uh, thoughtfulness about issues at hand, understanding of what the general manager versus the commissioner roles are, um, the awareness of, of appropriate, you know, role in running the treatment plant, uh, interagency skills, level of interest in this position and reasons why she was seeking it and you know they they put all of that together and really the last line of their response from all three of these these individuals was we think um, she would be an excellent choice as the district's next general manager and recommend her without reservations so it really goes to show and i'm sure that um you may have been supplied with miss lowe's um Mm -hmm. I call it a CV. Most people call it a resume, uh, but a uh, little bit of difference here and there, but a resume for all intents and purposes. So, uh, you know, she spent the opportunity to go through this process and, as, as we had asked, and that's why we wanted to make sure. And I think as Commissioner Lowe has, or Commissioner Kochi has spoken, uh, it's an interim. You know, we have a six month obligation for both parties to see if this is going to be the right fit. And, I don't know if you want to add anything else there, Commissioner. No, that's that's kind of that's kind of it. So I you know, just kind of um, whatever we can do or staff can do to um, you know share the background and um, you know help you determine whether you're comfortable with that approach or not. Or Yeah, I, I reviewed the resume that was sent over and the, the letter from the three people that interviewed her, and it looked great. I mean, they they pointed to all her strengths, and I, I liked what they had to say. And they're the experts, right? So. Yeah. Okay. Well, then we'll talk about it more in a, I, I assume Dan will talk about it more than in the public session tomorrow and then uh, potentially have that come for action tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, today is more of a <laughs> workshop for us to be able to just speak um, in an open public session if there is any anything that uh, you know each of us want to want to talk about given the fact that obviously uh, we can't speak behind closed doors on any of these things. Um, from the perspective, if it was contract related, obviously we, we can go into executive session, but this is discussion about the candidate um, in the in the position. So it's open and this is an op opportunity for each of us to kind of weigh in. And I know that you, Commissioner Stevenson, being brand new, we don't, I mean, there's a lot of decisions that do come down your way. And, and this is the opportunity. If you feel, yeah, we can move forward eventually, or you're comfortable with that, we can uh, move forward. If there's any time that we yeah, we need to shelve it, we do that. We, we respect each other enough to rather to have that, that conversation and say, yeah, let's, let's, let's have more detail. So I don't know if, if staff has any um, comments they want to put in there. The only thing I was going to ask, I, I assume that you would want Mariah in attendance tomorrow because we are going to be talking about this. I, I you know, I would like to have uh, 
Ms. Lowe there if, I mean, I'm, I'll look to the other board members if they feel that that would be appropriate, but I would have no, no issue with having Ms. Lowe being, being part of the, the, you know, discussion at the meeting and everything, obviously. I like people in front of us when we talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, with that. <laughs> I will make sure she gets an invitation. Okay, thank you. Anything from else uh, that you might have, Commissioner Stevenson, that you 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 feel that you want to say? Nope, this was super helpful. Thank you both, or all of you. <laughs> okay. well, we appreciate it, and I know you know uh, becoming a commissioner. Um, it's an exciting thing to do. It's it's a it's a great civic duty to give back to you know the the folks in our community. Um, I know that myself and I, I'm sure that Commissioner Koshi feels the same that, uh, um, you know, there's a great responsibility and, and, and we look at it from the, the district's point of view at times when we, we speak of things because obviously that's who we represent is the district and its ratepayers. So um, staff is always available for you. I mean, I know sometimes it might be 12 o'clock at night, they may not answer the phone, but uh, never say never. So. Uh, but you know they're 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 really responsive. I, I found every single person uh, within the organization very responsive, and, and don't be afraid to stop by and say hi. I mean they don't bite, and they they actually I think sometimes like to see us. Now if they change the combination, that might be something they're telling us. But they haven't done that yet. I'll send you the. I'll, Jennifer, I'll call you with the combination as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a great opportunity to make up uh, and give back um, to balance out some of my high school antics in the community. So it's a, a good deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Jennifer, tomorrow will be a virtual meeting and you did get the invitation, correct? Okay. I did, yeah. All right, perfect. All right. I don't think that we're putting a binder together for you that has the interlocal with all the amendments regarding all the bonds and a phone list and um, the jargon that I've made up over the years. Yeah, okay. I don't remember getting any of this coming on board. This is, <laughs> this is, I'm feeling that Mr. Stevenson is getting a little special treatment, but that's okay. <laughs> you, did, you didn't get any of that stuff? Wow, okay. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. I'm <laughs> bits, bits and pieces, but that's okay. No, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the I, other I, dug, I, I dug mine out of the old stuff I had from the previous stint because it was still the same agreement. I will say I took uh, Pam Stevens' uh, old uh, binder, and that's why all the amendments for the interlocal are in there about all the bonds and loans and stuff we put together for the the new wastewater treatment plant. And then Jennifer, you're set up. Uh, you're talking to Caitlin about a tour of the plant, both yeah. plants. Yep. The, the former wastewater treatment plant, the grass has not been maintained. So wear uh, <laughs> boots. <laughs> just wear boots. Yeah, that's all I can wear. Your big muckalock boots. That's that's what you're gonna want. So awesome. You're lucky you're doing yep. it now because that water rises much more. You need more than boots. Yeah. You're gonna yeah. need to put the boat. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, hip waders. Yeah. yeah. All right, I think that's all. I, I don't have anything, but Jennifer, if you have something, you can give me a call. Perfect, thank you, Tanya. Ah, uh, you're very welcome. Okay, okay. Right. No, we'll wrap this thing. Yep, we're gonna wrap this thing up. So hey, let's end up to adjourn this meeting. All right. <laughs> all right. I we'll make move. a motion to adjourn, Dan. It's been moved. How about a second? I'll let you second that, Jennifer. <laughs> Oh, I second. Who <laughs> can second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Where we go? Okay. Thank remember, I have to, I have your timesheet.